Welcome back to the Fermentation Adventure. If you were around for our last video, we made some really good apple jalapeno hot sauce. This week, we're kicking up the heat a little bit more and we are using habaneros. We're making a fermented, sweetened, spicy hot sauce today using pineapple and habaneros. And to make this recipe, we are using the natural process of lacto-fermentation, which means we're using lactic acid bacteria to do the work for us, and we're gonna have that really good vinegary taste, but we are not using any vinegar. Exactly. So like all of our recipes, this hot sauce is alive and so healthy with probiotics. And not only healthy, it tastes really, really good. Join us on this journey to explore the world of fermentation. If you'd like to learn how to make ferments like these, start now by clicking subscribe and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. So let's get started. And we're going to be making one quart of hot sauce today. And this brings us to our very first ingredient. It is the queen of the fruit world. And that is our lovely pineapple. So how we got this idea was as soon as we tasted our hot sauce previously, the jalapeno apple, we thought, man, we put a fruit in there and it was just so freaking good. We thought, you know, what other fruits could we use? That would be really amazing. And then that led us to pineapples and habaneros. And we thought that would be delicious. And we're going to use two and a half cups of pineapple for this one quart recipe. So let's get to cutting this thing. Now we just want to cut the top and bottom of this pineapple off. Now with these scraps, you don't really want to use the bottom piece. I'm just going to compost that. But we do have the top piece, which will grow into a whole new pineapple if you plant it. Bing! The queen. <laughs> Got her crown. Yeah, when you plant these, they make really good pineapples. Homegrown pineapples are the best. So next what we want to do is cut off the skin of this pineapple. So now that we got those peels out of the way, I'm actually just going to core this, cut it into four pieces, and there's this hard center that we want to remove. We don't want that in the hot sauce, otherwise it's going to make like really hard bits. Now we have all of these pineapple scraps, and usually stuff like this would go to the compost. But what we like to do, we, we always have pineapples around and we're making them for breakfast or smoothies or whatever, but we like to make a fermented drink out of this called tapache. It's a fermented pineapple drink. And every time we have a pineapple, we use these for that. We even have some going in the background right now. This has amazing flavor, so don't throw these away. If you want to learn how to make tapache, check out this video right here. Next, we're going to cut these into either slices or chunks. This is just makes it easier so it fits into the jar. You also want to be using fresh pineapple. If you have one that might be going bad, you might want to reconsider that because it might end up getting mold. So fresh pineapple. We're ready to start filling the jar. And I've got a one quart mason jar. Then I'm going to start measuring our two and a half cups and putting them into the bottom of the jar. And we're going to use a funnel so we don't make a mess. So taking everything within you not to eat all of this pineapple? Yes. I like to shake the jar a bit to try and get all of the pieces to condense down. So I think we use probably about half of the pineapple. So if you like hot sauce, I would definitely use a two quart jar and you can have double the amount of hot sauce. Our next ingredient is habaneros. And because these are super spicy and we want to be able to enjoy our hot sauce, we're only going to be using two habaneros for this recipe. But you may want to wear gloves as you cut these habaneros because they are super spicy. Or you can take a risk like we are going to, but try not to get it all over your fingers and definitely don't touch your face. I'm living on the edge. I'm just going to cut the stem off and then quarter these. Oh, I can actually smell the spice already. But if you don't like it so spicy, what you could do, you could either use one habanero, so use a little bit less, or you could cut out the pith, so the white part of the pepper along with the seeds. That's where a lot of the spiciness is, called capsaicin. Now it's time to add these habaneros to the jar and add our second layer to this beautiful little ferment we're creating. But I'm gonna use tongs because I don't wanna get any of the pepper juice on my fingers. And the next ingredient, we are going to use one fourth of an onion. Ooh, that one right here for you. Beautiful. Could be a yellow onion, white onion, red onion. We have a yellow onion right here. We like to add onion because it adds a little bit of tanginess once it's fermented. Then I'm just going to cut this into slices. The smaller the slices, the better it is for fermentation. 
I'm just gonna put a little layer in there. Oh, I'm dropping some onion. I'm gonna push this down and make a little more room. Oh my god, it's these onions! How is this not getting you? I'm serious. I think I must be ah. immune to that. Now, when it comes to the spice, I breathe it in and it just chokes me. It doesn't. It doesn't yeah, affect me doesn't so much. It doesn't affect her. Yeah, it's funny. Our next ingredient to our hot sauce is garlic. We're adding two cloves. Oh! <laughs> he didn't know that was coming. <laughs> we love to add garlic. Adds tons of flavor. I'm just gonna give this a good crush and release all those good flavors. It also makes the peels easier to come off. Now we're just gonna add those right to the jar. The next ingredient is a surprise ingredient. <gasps> surprise! surprise! <laughs> Yes, surprising, because it's ginger root. And it's not something you would expect to see in hot sauce, but we find it actually adds an amazing special flavor for sweet hot sauces especially, so. Yeah, when you add that to garlic, garlic and ginger, oh, they, they just go beautifully together, especially in Thai cooking. Exactly. And with this pineapple, I think that's really gonna add a special flavor. Oh yeah. So we're gonna be using one teaspoon of fresh ginger root. And you can peel this ginger any which way you want. Some people like to use a spoon to just get just the skin off, but if you're handy with a knife, you can also just cut it right off. And I'm handy with a knife. I know. <laughs> we like to mince this up as much as we can because we made hot sauce before. And if you leave it more into stringy pieces, there's some string in the hot sauce. So make sure to mince it up to, to break up those fibers. I need one teaspoon, please. Coming right up. Oh, we have a lot extra. Yeah, okay, so you probably only need to use about half an inch of your ginger. I'm gonna put right in there. Ready? <laughs> Boop. Now what you could do with this extra ginger, you could feed your ginger bug if you have a ginger bug going for soda. Actually, that's such a good idea. I'm gonna do it right now before I forget. So I'm gonna feed my ginger bug, put a little sugar, put a little ginger. Actually, I'm just gonna put it all. Why not? There we go. Give it a good stir. Going back in the fridge. This brings us to our next ingredient, which is an herb and it's cilantro. Now cilantro adds a really good flavor to it, but you'll notice it's green and really everything else is, you know, more of like a yellow or red. If you put this in, it will turn it just a little bit green. So if, if you want it more orange, you might want to leave that out, but it adds a really great flavor. So you, we don't even need to chop this up. We just kind of twirl it up and stick it right on top. Now, since this is such a fresh recipe, I wouldn't use dried cilantro because the fresh cilantro is just so good. That brings us to our final ingredient, which is the salt brine. This is where the real magic of fermentation happens. Now, if you just leave that sitting there, it would ferment, but you would probably get mold. So you need some kind of liquid to put it below the brine. So what we're gonna do, we're using a salt brine ratio of one teaspoon of salt to one and a half cups of non-chlorinated water. Now non-chlorinated water is really important because when you're dealing with fermentation, you're dealing with all of these microorganisms that are alive. And if you put chlorine in there, it might kill them. What we're gonna do is cover this with a salt brine and make sure everything stays below the brine because we don't want mold. And from our experience in making this recipe, you should only need about one and a half cups of salt brine to fill the jar. You can use any kind of salt you like, but we actually like to use sea salt just because of the added minerals. And you're just gonna stir to dissolve. Let's pour the salt brine into our jar. And you'll notice some of the ingredients are floating up to the top. So in the fermentation process, we want everything to be below the brine. So now to weigh this down, in the past what we've used is really anything in the kitchen and that ended up being a jelly jar. And that fit right into the mouth of the jar, which it worked out perfect, but it kept overflowing. So now we've moved on to these really nice glass fermentation weights. Put these right into the jar and they just make sure everything stays below the brine. Why we really like these too is they're really heavy so they will keep everything down. It's nice about it being all glasses. Of course, you can really wash these very well. I just put them in the dishwasher. You might notice that you actually have too much water. If that happens and it's overflowing, you can remove a little bit of the water. So now that brings us to what do we cover this with? Now you could really use anything, but we want to keep oxygen out of the jar because mold really loves oxygen. So now what we like to do is we take and use these fermentation lids and you just put these right on top of the jar and then just screw them on with a little metal band. And the little hole allows the gas to escape but does not let any oxygen in. From this point, you can actually blend it up right now before you ferment it and then put it back into the jar and then usually everything will sink below the brine. So that's 
one way to do hot sauce. We still like to use the weight so we can be guaranteed that everything stays below the brine rather than having all the little particles floating to the top. Guess what? We're ready for the fermentation process to begin. But of course the question is, how long should this sit on the counter? When we're making hot sauce, we usually like between one and two weeks. Anything past that is probably diminishing returns, but we're gonna follow this jar every single day and show you what to expect. After 24 hours, we're not seeing any difference in color, but we're starting to see some bubbles when we move the jar. We're also following the fermentation journey of this pre-blended hot sauce, where we blended the ingredients before fermenting it. After two days, wow, the brine is starting to get cloudy, and we're seeing a few more bubbles. There's even more defined separation happening in the pre-blended hot sauce, which is great because it will keep any mold from forming. After three days, we're seeing a lot of bubbles when we move the jar. By day four, the bubbles are now appearing without us even moving the jar. Also, the pre-blended hot sauce is starting to look a bit cloudier. After five days, the brine is much cloudier and there's foamy bubbles now appearing. We can also see bubbles collecting at the top of the pre-blended hot sauce. We have a side-by-side -side comparison. This we just made and this beautiful jar has been fermenting for six whole days. We couldn't wait any longer. We have to take a look. It is super cloudy on the one that's been fermenting. Quite a big difference in the color. You can definitely notice. All right, let's dive in and see what it looks like. Whoa, that smells so good. Well, that was really surprising. We had the fermentation weight on there, so it was weighing everything down, but as soon as the pineapple got softer, it sank even further and some of the ingredients escaped around it. So it's a really good thing that we had that fermentation lid on top because it made sure none of the oxygen got inside so we didn't get mold. But Ooh. yeah, it looks beautiful. It smells like sweet. Wow. It smells really good. It really does. But oh. a very clear layer on top, no sign of anything bad. So I said we're ready to make some hot sauce. Yeah, let's blend this sucker up. <laughs> But first, we have to take the fermentation weight out of this jar. And it has sank about halfway down, so it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to try and uh, get it out with these tongs by turning it on its side. That wasn't so bad. Look at that. I didn't even get dirty. So we're going to be using our Vitamix blender today, but you can actually use any blender you want because most of this now is really soft, especially since the seeds in the habanero is they're not real big anyway. So we should be able to blend this in any blender you choose. You ready? <gasps> Wait, what is that? What? What is that? Tapache. It's a tapache without molasses, so it looks a little lighter in color. Just wait till you try this. At this point, we have our blended hot sauce and we're ready for the next step. But if you don't want it so thick and you want it more liquidy, so you can pour it into a, you know, a little bottle and then kind of drip it out. Like Tabasco. Yeah, like Tabasco, you might want to strain it off. And you have a couple different options with this. You can either use a metal strainer, so pour it in there and just kind of press it off. Or you can put it into like a nut milk bag or like a cheesecloth, something like that. But since we love it so thick, we're just gonna leave it as it is and then we just kind of spoon it out or pour it out. So that brings us to taste test. Oh yeah, this is thick. Look at that beautiful color though. It's like a beautiful orange. All right, let's taste it. <laughs> That's a hot sauce, all right? Whoa, <clears throat> Whoa baby. Whoa, baby. <laughs> ah! That's spicy. That, that's huh. like a lingering spice though. I tasted it and then the spice lingers. <laughs> Whoa, that is much spicier than I expected. But the yeah. pineapple, my God. Ah, oh, such a heavenly smell. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> it's so it's, good. It's sweet, it's tangy, <clears throat> and it's super spicy. I think it's absolutely wow. delicious. So now we just need to store this. Yeah, and you can do that in a few different ways. You can either use mason jars, so we like to either, you know, put them in the little jelly jars, wrap them up for presents, which is kind of nice. You can put them into a mason jar, stick it in the fridge. The only thing with that though, it's hard to pour from. So we also like to use um, wine bottles, which is really nice with the lid on top, 
or we have these clear soda bottles that have a flip top, which is really nice. And we'll we've used these for ginger ale, for other sodas that we made, but the fact that it has a flip top will just kind of keep it all nice and clean in the fridge where you're gonna store it and you can have it for up to probably a year after it being in the fridge. And then one quart recipe that we just used will make two of these soda bottles. Look at the beautiful color. I love these clear glasses. They will separate, so when they're in the fridge, you'll see that. We usually shake it up a little bit before we use it on meal. And let's also stir the hot sauce we blended up before fermentation. It's essentially the same thing. Hmm, that one's good too. Same thing. We hope you guys have loved making this fermented pineapple habanero sauce. It was so good. If you like this video, give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with your friends, and get out there and create some culture. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>